Oh, yeah, hey. Hi, how are you tonight? Welcome to the card corner of the Magic Palace. Nice to have you here. You know, ladies and gentlemen, over the years, there's been a large controversy as to who's the best with a deck of cards, gamblers or magicians. This controversy's been going on for a long time. So not too long ago, a group of people decided to find out. They searched around the world until they found the top man in each of his chosen professions, the top gambler, the top magician. And they took them to a place just outside of Monte Carlo where they met for the first time. I am now going to show you exactly what happened when the world's greatest gambler met the world's finest magician. The two men sat down and they faced each other. There was only one condition, challenge. And the first one who cannot meet the other's challenge is disqualified. Now, who was to go first? Obviously, they couldn't cut cards. That'd be ridiculous. So they flipped a coin. The magician won. The magician said, what I would like is to have touch a card. So would you just reach over and place your finger on any one of the 52 cards and leave your finger on it? That one right there, fine. My friend, did you happen to see what that card was? Magician said, somebody has selected a card completely at random from the deck. Nobody knows what it is. He said, what I now want you to do is to cut to the other three cards in the deck that will match that card exactly. Gamble said, I've never done that before in my life. He said, the odds of doing it are absolutely fantastic. He said, before I turn over a card, can I give the deck just three fair cuts? Magician said, all right. Gambler cut them three times, and he caught a jack. He said, I have one card, the jack of spades. Now, remember, he could cut the deck three times. He said, if I'm very lucky, and he caught the jack of hearts. He said, I have two of them, the jack of hearts and the jack of spades. At this particular point in time, there are now 49 cards left in the deck. Only one of them is a jack. The odds, 48 to 1. Jack of clubs, jack of hearts, jack of spades. He said, I have won the challenge. And just said, wait a moment. We really don't know. My friend, would you do me a favor, please, and turn over the fourth card to prove they did indeed win the challenge. And as you can see, he won with absolutely no... <laughs> Would you like to see another trick? <laughs> Magician said you lost. Gambler said, hold on, now wait a second, just a minute. You did not say I must cut to jacks. You only said I must cut to cards to match this. Dear, would you turn the jacks face up for us, please? Oh. Magician said, wait a minute. He said, what happened to the jacks? The gambler said, they're right there. Am I going too fast for you? Yeah. Thank you. No, it's just that you're watching a little slowly. <laughs> you know, folks, if you watch people playing poker, you'll notice a strange, weird, wild, and wonderful thing. There's always one fellow who loses continuously. Then when he loses, he always wants to cut the cards double or nothing. Of course, if he loses on the first cut, then he always wants to cut again and again and again until he must eventually win. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm now going to show you exactly how I cut cards. And as I do this, I ask you to remember only one thing, please. I could do this in your home with your deck of cards for your paycheck. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the cards are honest, and it is only the hands that cheat. One method of cutting cards, the big one. Now, there's one thing I'd like to point out, if I may. You see, if I'd cut one card less or one card more, I would have missed it completely. I'll give the deck a bit of a shuffle, and we'll try it again. I'll show you a more difficult way of cutting cards. Oh, we'll mix them up. The one-handed face-down cut. This is the cut that is used primarily in Europe. And the reason that they use it is because, as they explain, you cannot flash the card prior to showing it. Now, I've cut out the ace of spades and the ace of diamonds. I'm going to use this young lady here and this gentleman here. And it's ladies first and dear. Which do you prefer, the ace of hearts or the ace of clubs? Hearts. The ace of hearts. Now, tell me, do you want it the hard way? or the easy way. Whatever. It's up to you. Hard way. The hard way for the ace of clubs. That, my friend, ace of hearts. That would leave you the ace of clubs. Dear, because you asked for the ace of hearts the hard way, would you please give me any number that you like, say, between 10 and 20? Nine. And it was a question too difficult, dear? <laughs> between 10 and 20. Oh, I'm sorry, 11. 11. Any number but 11. No, you see, I never practiced with that because nobody ever used it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm going to attempt to do. I'm going to attempt to find the ace of hearts from wherever it is in the deck and place it 11. That's the number you wanted, right? 11th from the top. 
Now, you may actually see the card going into position. However, the reason I do this is to show people how quickly a professional can take any card and place it exactly where he wants in the pack. Now, dear, I'm not too sure where the Ace of Hearts is. Do you mind if I take a little look? Say you don't mind. Right. <laughs> Thank you very kindly. Okay. <laughs> dear, I was only looking for one card. <laughs> oh, boy, yes. Now, dear, the 11 would be right there. Okay, here we go. Would you pick up the deck, please? Would you now count the cards, face up, one at a time, onto the pad to the 11th card? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the 11th card over here. Thank you very kindly. You don't understand any of this, do you? Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you're wonderful. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, as I always tell people, if you're going to play cards, play with somebody else. Not with me. Okay, thank you very kindly. Come back to the card castle anytime. Thank you. Thank you.